All right, if you struggled a little bit, then you want to watch this video. If you did everything and checked it and it was fine, don't worry about it. I'm just going to go through some of the highlights here. So when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at the um, slope here. Slope tells me it's the rise over the run. So it subtract the y's. So it's 9 minus a negative 3. And that gives me the 12. And then negative 4 or 1 minus a negative 4 gives me the positive 5. So it's 12 over 5. Remember, slope is a ratio of how it, the line increases. It goes up 12 for every 5 that goes over. So slope is, always looks like a ratio. Midpoint says it's going to be a point. It's going to look like a point that's in the middle of those two dots. So we've got to find the middle point. So to do that, we add, we add the x's together. We find the average. So that's negative 3 over 2 is negative 3 halves. So negative 3 halves is negative 1 and a half. And then it looks like it's going to be about 3. So then I take the x's and add those together. Or the y, excuse me. So that's 9 uh, minus 3. This should be a minus 3. So that would be 6 divided by 2 is 3, up 3. Okay, that makes sense. And then Pythagorean's theorem to find the length. The length is how far it is from here to here. And that's like a tape measure going on there. How many units is it over? Well, it's 13 units. 12 squared plus 5 squared. The slope. Once again, find the slope. Just subtract the y's or subtract the x's. Don't forget to reduce, and then um, add the x's together, divide by 2, add the y's together, divide by 2, and then we get over here for the length, you have to use the original, that's what this little arrow means, so it's 8 squared plus 6 squared, 64 plus 36 is 100, the square root of that is 10. Alright, so then... Find the middle, let's do slope again. So that guy minus that guy makes it a plus. That guy minus that guy. Oh, she's doing this way, sorry. Negative four minus a negative three, that's why it's plus. Three minus a negative five. That's how you get the plus eight on the bottom. Find the midpoint, so you add these two together, divide by two, so that's negative two divided by two is one. And then look at the y's now. So add those together. It's negative 7 divided by 2. Perfect. Pythagorean's theorem. Don't worry about the negatives. We're just looking at distance. Even if you wrote this as a negative 1, you'd have parentheses there, and that'd still come out to be a positive 1. But distance is always positive. And then these are just reviews talking about the definition. Isosceles triangle, these two angles are equal, and these two sides are equal. You know, right triangle, <coughs> excuse me, it's Pythagorean theorem, equilateral, means all the sides are equal, <coughs> excuse me, um, square means 90 degrees on all of them, and the sides are all equal, trapezoid, rhombus, the sides are all equal, and these sides are parallel. So if I know that these two angles are equal, I know these two sides are equal. So I can write an equation where those two are equal, solve it. This is all kind of review, alternate interior angles, we know these are parallel lines. So alternate interior angles are the same, and linear pair right there is how she got the 40. And all three angles of a triangle add up to be 180. This is something you haven't seen. Um, so we're proving that these two triangles are congruent. It's a little more complicated than what we were doing with the... Um, Congruent triangles, that's all right here. So then we have midpoint tells me that these two are equal to each other because that cuts it in half. Midpoint tells me these two are equal to each other because it cuts it in half. So that's how I come up with that definition of midpoint. It says that, um, that's an A, AE and CE are the same, the congruent. And the reason why is the definition of um, midpoint. <clears throat> Midpoint over here tells me that BE, or EB in this case, and ED are the same by the definition of midpoint. So I can say that this angle and this angle are equal because they're vertical angles. So here's me saying that. 
and saying that it's vertical angles. Now this is a side, an angle, and a side tells me that those two triangles are congruent. That's all it's doing. Don't freak out on it. Plotting uh, these three points, consider the two line segments, so you're connecting AB, AB, and CD. Most people read that wrong and draw a quadrilateral there. We're just looking at this line segment and that line segment and asking a few questions about it. Hey, what's the length of AB? Well, length of AB, use Pythagorean's theorem. Since that's 6 and this is 9, okay? And on this one, you're doing Pythagorean's theorem to do the other one. And you're writing the equation, you're writing the equation for this one. And you should notice that they're perpendicular since they're opposite reciprocals. Uh, find where they're equal, you're plugging them in equal to each other. And solving, I would multiply by 6. That's what she did here. That's good. All right. And there you go. Quick little review of that.